Starting in verse number 19. You shall count it, say amen. And stand to your feet to honor the reading of this portion.
has a poem that I learned years ago while in high school. Some of you may know it. The sermon or poet titled it Provide, Provide. It begins with these words. The witch that came, the withered path, to watch the steps in pale and black, was once a beauty abstract. Apparently, the woman that looks broke down and tore up. At one time, could have won anybody's beauty contest. The woman that now is bent over, washing steps with an old rag and a beat up hair, used to have it going on. The woman now that children told to avoid who probably doesn't have her hygiene the way it used to be, once had it so good that everybody talked about how wonderful this is for. The author of the poem points to a reality that happens in life. Somebody called it the reversal of fortune. Are y'all here? How things change so quick. Do I have a witness? We spend so much time and energy trying to make things stay the same. But you can't Stop change. Keep on living. You're going to be shorter at 70 than you were at 25. Do I have a witness here? Keep on living. You're going to remember stuff that happened 20 years ago. But can't remember where you parked your car an hour. Reversal 
was Naomi. Naomi had it going on. If there was ever in the 1950s model of a Stepford wife, it was Naomi. Naomi had a house. She had a husband. She had two boys. She probably had a nice station wagon. You know, the LTD kind back in the day that had the seat that looked back towards the window so the kids could have a good time seeing where they came from. I wish I had a witness here. She had everything you could think of. She had a checking account, a savings account, Visa, MasterCard, American Express. Oh, she had colors. She had one that was blue, one that was gold, and one that was even black and had no limit. Naomi had it going on. Naomi had it all together. I bet if you were to ask Naomi, her children couldn't play with any kind of children because she had a plan for her. Y'all better hear me. And some children were just not qualified. I believe Naomi maybe had her children sign up for Jack and Jill. <laughs> Ain't nobody. They just couldn't get in. <laughs> because they were telling that my children want to go to the University of Jerusalem and major in doctoring and lawyering and become somebody more going to be the leader of our country. She had it all going on. One day, her husband came home and said, baby, we got to move. The economy has turned bad. And unlike other folk, we're not limited to one geography because you know, when you have money, you have options. Tell me I'm telling a lie. When you have money, you can look for an option. That's the sad thing about poverty. Poverty takes away your option. She had an option. They said, all right. Let's go ahead and pack up our LTD and go ahead and pack up our stuff. We ain't got to worry about selling no house. This house paid off. We'll just close it down and put a guard around it, board the windows up. Let's go over to another country because I hear things over there are a little better and we can fit in to the economy and we can make it right. She said, all right, baby, that's what you want to do. I'll get the kids ready. We'll leave them first thing in the morning. I see her right now. I can never run to help me this thing out for myself. I don't care about y'all today. I see her. I can never run to help them. The fried chicken the, and the pound cake right in the brown bag. Come on, children. We got to journey to another country. And when they got there, it looked good. Trust me. Uh, but one morning, she called her husband's name. And she called him again, but he wouldn't move. Death had showed up before it was supposed to. I wish I had somebody who knew how to talk to me real now. Death had a way of coming when you least expect it. And it never asked you how you feel about it. It just sits down and takes over. Husband died. She had to go ahead. She had life insurance. She wasn't worried about a whole lot. She paid for the burial. And the neighbors who she met in the new city, they gave him a proper burial and all of that. And she said, all right, it's all right. I said, all right, it's all right. I got a little money to save. Saved up here. He left us all right. But I got my two boys. Hallelujah. My two boys. God bless them. I've already got married to two good girls from this part of the country. They, they are all right. They're not everything I wanted them to be, but at least these two girls got it going on. So she figured, well, I'll be all right. But don't you know it? Change. Woke up one morning, knocked on the door. Someone tells her, your sons are dead. Naomi, they died without leaving you any grandchildren. So now, you bury the husband, 
last year. And before the earth can have its way, you now got to bury your sons. And on top of that, now you are living by yourself in a strange land, preached to the family. And nobody but you. And you got to figure out what to do. Oh, reversal of fortune. They already had it all. But she lost it all, and I believe when she tried to use that gold car, she'd be told by the cashier, the bank told me not to give it back to you. I believe when she tried to write a check, they'll tell her, no, baby, your checks don't work here. Too many bad ones we got to collect from still. I believe when she looked in her couch and shaped under her rug and tore up her furniture and went through all of her husband's and children's clothes, she couldn't find two nipples to rub together. She was broke! But she heard that the God who sent them on the journey to find some bread and some bread from their own place had blessed their own country. So she said, all right, here's what we're going to do. I'm by myself now. I'm going to get my stuff, pack up my little old GD. Hope I have enough gas to get back home with it. I'm going to pray.
see her coming closer. She held on to that Jesus to walk. Her back straight. Now she's walking and she's limping and she's walking in front of you. Her head is down. And there's a person walking behind her. And the women see her, they say, oh,
call down to heaven. You can declare it is so, it is so, it is so. You can call your so-called prayer partners and y'all can walk around the apartment and pray all day and all night. But that doesn't always change the outcome. What do you do with life? Leaves you all empty and to make matters worse. You have a God who declares that earth is mine, the food is thereof, but you still own empty. What do you do when life leaves you on empty? I'm telling you, this is the crux of faith. This is where faith has to have an answer. Because for too many of us, we're good when God. But when we're empty, we don't know what to do. What do you do when life leaves you on empty? They always say, don't call me mom. I don't have nothing left. Life has left me on empty. And I'm talking to somebody right now. Life has left you on empty. And you're looking at the preacher in the pulpit, I'm going to tell you in some ways life has left me on empty. But is there anybody here that can testify but if it don't mean it's over. I wish you would come and tell somebody right now, empty. I wish you would come and tell somebody, empty. It does not mean the end. If I say that, I'm not going to be like this, man. If I say that, because they open, say that I'm empty. But what she forgot to realize, not yet. It's one thing the Bible said, the Lord yes. brought yes. me yes. back. Yes. And when the light leaves you on empty, I can tell you what I found out for myself. God is still working things out in your life. I wish I had a witness here. And don't mind testifying that sometimes it felt like it was all falling apart. But do I have a that God was still in your life working things out that don't make God do. I want to tell you all, when you come to empty, empty is never the end because God has a plan that has your name on it. All you've got to do is to put one foot in front of the other and lift your hand. Do I have a witness here? The 
because the Lord is still working things out. That's why I come to church on Sunday. That's why I worship the Lord like I do. Because I've seen the light and flesh. And I've heard the dark of God. But I know God. But never let that come to an end. When he doesn't step in and turn things around. Cry, if you will. Grieve as long as you have to. But whatever 